Okay, y'all, sh- you should be able to hear me now. So I guess I'm gonna say it again. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. This is a mess. Okay, so, um, what I do for Bible study and crochet is I pretty much have the Bible app on, playing in the background while I crochet. And so I'm, I, when you come into these things, I'm not preaching to you. <laughs> I'm not sitting here and like persuading you to do anything. It's just a chill moment where we can come together and crochet, talk about crochet and fellowship. That's all I'm doing, right? I'm not preaching to nobody. <laughs> we're just listening to the Bible together. That's all we're doing. Um, so for today's project, I'm working on this six day granny, uh, sorry, six day man blanket by Betty McNitt. So if you're watching this, that's what I'm working on. Um, I'm using an eight millimeter crochet hook and the app that I'm using to, um, the app that I'm using it's just the Bible app, and I have plans that I listen to. So right now we're looking to we we are listening to Strong Faith, and what how it works is we start with the devotional, and then the devotional goes into these different um uh what's it called it scriptures. That have to do with a devotional. And today we're on day one. If you want, I'll link this in my YouTube um, link. But we are focusing on strong faith. And so then y'all can follow along whether you're watching this or not. Um, But yeah, go ahead. If you have any questions or want to, you know, get into the conversation, by all means, comment. Um... And make sure you like so other people can see this. Um, But yeah, it's supposed to be very chill, very calming. You know, we have very busy days and sometimes we don't stop to um, read our Bible (laughs) or fellowship with the Lord. Hello, Stephanie. Um, Sometimes we just have like really busy days and we don't, we forget to stop and take time to fellowship. Um... So that's why I wanted to do this. And about this time is when my son is sleeping, taking a nap. So that's why I was like, this is probably the perfect time to do it. Um, So that's what we're doing. And yeah. (laughs) Um, I haven't done this in a while. But I'm going to try to do this maybe every other week is probably what I'm going to do. So that we can just catch up and stuff like that. Um, unfortunately on YouTube, because (laughs) I haven't got my whole setup straight yet, you'll be seeing me from the top down and a TikTok will be seeing me as I'm crocheting. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and flip my cameras, but by all means, like I, I will, I love to see everybody's thoughts as we get through, um, as we go through the plan. All right, and I'm just going to go ahead and start the devotional. Keep the faith. Division is always for the appointed time. Faith does not make things easy. It makes them possible. Sometimes the best thing you can do is have faith that everything will work out for the best, and that true peace comes from knowing that God is in control. Strong Christians build their faith. David encouraged and strengthened himself in the Lord as God. Dash 1 Samuel 36, AMPC. Always remember that faith is your responsibility. It isn't God's, it isn't your pastor's, and it isn't your spouse's. The only one who can guarantee that you enjoy a strong faith is you. Feeding your faith is the seed. Hearing it, again and again, is how you water the seed and build faith. When I was younger, I used to work out and it took repetition to build my muscles. Just as with natural muscles, repetition is the key to building strong faith. When you build your faith by reading and hearing the word daily, the truth will come, faith will come, and then victory will come to you. If you are going to do anything for God, it's going to take faith. Don't let the devil keep you out of the church. You have to stand on the promises of God. We have to make the right choices. 
Most of us didn't come right when we first heard the word of God, but God gave us another chance. If you want to live a different life you have to have a different mindset, you have to use faith. If we can't see what God is doing we sometimes try to help God out due to our faith being shaken. There are some things that you believe God for that you can't allow time to dictate when you'll receive it. Always remember that you are in a faith battle. We put burglar alarms on our cars, houses etc, but what kind of alarm did you put on your soul? Because that's the only thing that the devil is after. Prayer. God, please help me to continue to have faith in you that things will get better for me and my family. Please help me to stay positive and to keep the devil's evil ways away from me and my thoughts. In your name, I pray. Amen. And without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Jesus replied, what is impossible with man is possible with God. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, if you have faith and do not doubt, not only can you do what was done to the fig tree, but also you can say to this mountain, go, throw yourself into the sea, and it will be done. If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Oh. Um, okay. Fix your eyes on Jesus. The scriptures repeatedly remind us that God is our strength and refuge, an ever-present help in trouble. He will never leave us nor forsake us. He knows our tomorrows, our hearts, our thoughts, and our ways. He is our shepherd, who makes us lie down in green pastures, leads us beside the still waters and restores our souls. He guides us in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Oh, what an awesome God we serve. Why are we, then, so easily distracted from these truths due to life circumstances and trials? You must fix your eyes on Jesus. Trust him even when you don't feel like it. He's the target. Fear can overtake us all, but God is all-powerful and will offer us all the strength we need. Our only job is to keep our eyes on Jesus. His love for us will sustain us through any storms. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surgeon. Psalm 46 1-3 NIV In all of our lives, there will be storms that will pop up. What will be your response when it shows up? We all need to know how to use God's word to deal with any storm that shows up. You can't stop moving when you are in the middle of a storm. You must keep moving. If you are never tested, you'll never know how much of God's word you have inside you to stand on. If you keep your focus on Jesus, you will be all right, just don't lose sight of him. When you face the facts and realize how much you need Jesus in your life, you'll realize that the storm will pass. Jesus can't be an afterthought, he must remain preeminent, superior. If we trust and believe God, somehow he will work it all out for our good, but you may not see it. You have to remember that the enemy hopes the storm will get you to lose sight of Jesus. Prayer. Thank you, Lord, for those through whom you have ministered to me. But may my eyes be fixed not on them, but only on you. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, 
walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. From the valley to the victory. Today, we find ourselves in the valley. Some are in the valley of cancer or another diagnosis. Others are in a valley of financial hardship. Some are trudging through a valley of anxiety or depression. We have to cross the valley to get to our victory, just like Joshua and Israel. We don't like that. We want to be airlifted out of the whole situation, but God wants us to go through the valley to reach the victory. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15 57 NKJV You can have victory over any situation or emotion in your life. Anytime you begin to feel despair in any area, just grab hold of that thought and hold it up to the truth that God has given you the victory. 2 Corinthians 10 5 calls that process taking every thought captive. Keep your eyes on Jesus. When you are low in spirit, the enemy makes you think it won't get any better than what you are currently going through. If trouble never came, you wouldn't have ever known that God could get you out of it. Mm -hmm. One of the tools that the enemy is using right now is discouragement. Discouragement is an unwelcome visitor trying to work its way into our lives. God is getting ready to do something for us, and the way the enemy is going to try to get us to abort it is through discouragement. A lot of times people don't want to go through the valley process, but they want the rewards from the victory. God knows what you need, and he knows when you need it. Prayer. Lord, when I feel overwhelmed, you always answer me and restore my faith. But praising you after you answer me is gratitude, not faith. So Lord, please help me to have strong faith so that even when I'm in the valley, I know I have a victory with you. Mm -hmm. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? David was greatly distressed because the men were talking of stoning him. Each one was bitter in spirit because of his sons and daughters. But David found strength in the Lord his God. Then David said to Abiathar, the priest, the son of Ahimelech, Bring me the ephod. Abiathar brought it to him. And David inquired of the Lord, Shall I pursue this raiding party? Will I overtake them? Pursue them, he answered. You will certainly overtake them and succeed in the rescue. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. All right, I'm almost done with this devotional. Stephanie M says, praise God. Yes, praise the Lord. And I am MVP says, don't mess up. It's okay to mess up as long as you fix it. If you wait, he'll work it out. Stephanie M says, I feel like the Lord led me to crochet because I was never interested. The Lord works in very mysterious ways. Same thing. I never thought that I would be sitting here crocheting. <laughs> um, 
and especially if you if you would have told me like shoot five years from now five years uh from now that I would be a stay-at-home mom doing crochet videos <laughs> I would have said you're a liar but you know what I'm never I've never been happier so it's strange that this is what I'm doing now yeah it it is strange but God works in very mysterious ways and yes thank you so much for the likes Yes, praise the Lord. Okay, we're almost done with this devotional, and then I like to move on to, because I'm probably going to be on here till about uh, 2 o'clock, so then we're going to go to my other devotional that I do as well. Before God moves suddenly, we will wait. Waiting for answers is a fact of life. Nobody gets out of it. So the question is not if we'll wait, but rather how we'll wait. And I believe how we wait will determine how long we wait. All day today declare and decree this to yourself. If I wait, God will work it out. If we don't build up our faith in the waiting place, we will allow the enemy to make us give up. It's not what you do when you are waiting on God. It's the mindset you have during those times. If we all knew how long God wanted us to wait, we would all get a little stronger to wait. But it doesn't always work that way. If you position yourself, you'll see that God already worked out your situation. Build a healthy appetite and a good study of his word and you'll see that it's already done. So many people are anxious and nervous about a lot of things in life and never take a stand for God, but stand for everything else. Just stand for God and trust him and he'll work it out. When you are going through, you just need someone to tell you, just hang in there and touch the hem of Jesus' garment and stand on the promises of God. You can't ask God to do something and not believe that he's going to do it. You have to get the doubt out the way, get it out of your mind and the people who speak doubt out of your presence. When all else seems to go by the wayside, ask God to hide you under the shadow of his wings. It's dangerous to leave the protection of the Father before it's your appointment time. How long are you willing to wait for God to manifest what he promised you? The Bible says that Abraham believed that God was able to perform what he promised him. It's a good thing to trust in the Lord and not look back. The more you look back, the more you'll start to desire the things that God is trying to take you from. Don't let your waiting mess you up. What God has for you is coming quicker than you think. Sometimes your waiting implies that God is hiding you intentionally for his purpose. If you're willing to wait, he'll work it out. We hope this plan encouraged you to learn more about Bishop David A. Hadley SR HTTPS colon slash slash www.glorytabernacle.org slash Pastor David Adam Hadley SR slash. And without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. If only you would hide me in the grave, and conceal me till your anger has passed. If only you would set me a time and then remember me. If someone dies, will they live again? All the days of my hard service, I will wait for my renewal to come. You do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Just then, a woman, who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years, came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak. She said to herself, If I only touch his cloak, I will be healed. How I wish I could be with you now and change my tone, because I am perplexed about you. Tell me, you who want to be under the law, are you not aware of what the law says? All right, and so that's the end of the Strong Faith um, devotional. That plan is complete. Thank you, everybody on YouTube and TikTok who have been participating. I greatly appreciate it. Now let's go to a Bible in one year. I am very much... <laughs> <laughs> overdoing this because I don't unfortunately I don't look at this plan every day I normally do like the shorter devotionals because they amount to about 30 minutes which is exactly what I do but we're gonna we're gonna um go on to this one um this devotional is talking about um in trouble but I trust in you This is the Bible in one year, day 67. But, during one of the severe potato famines in Ireland, a number of families wrote letters to their landlord 
saying they had absolutely no money at all to pay their rent and begged to be let off all their debts. The Irish landlord was Canon Andrew Robert Fawcett, born near Elliskillen, County Fermar, Ireland, in 1821. Canon Fawcett wrote back to his tenants. He said it was quite impossible to let them off their debts. It would set a bad precedent. They had to pay back every single penny. But, he wrote, I enclosed something that might help you. In contrast to so many of the other landlords at the time, he sent a cheque for a very large sum of money, which far more than covered all their debts. Their hearts must have leapt with joy when they saw the word but. But is a powerful word when facing trouble, tests, and temptations. In trouble, but I trust in you. No one can go through life without facing troubles. If David's example is anything to go by, anyone in a position of leadership will face more than most. David was in trouble. With grief, my eyes weakened. Also, my inner self and my body. He was facing spiritual, mental and physical challenges. He faced distress, sorrow, grief, anguish, groaning, affliction, illness, enemies, contempt from his neighbours, brokenness, terror, conspiracy and plots. Yet in the midst of all this, he's able to say, but I trust in you, Lord. I say you are my God. My times are in your hands. He trusts in God's unfailing love. Sometimes when things are going wrong, it's hard to believe that God really does love you. But he does. David cries out for help because he trusts that God will deliver him. It's in tough times that the object in which you trust is really put to the test. But, as Henry Ford wrote, when everything seems to be going against you, remember that the airplane takes off against the wind, not with it. Trust that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who've been called according to his purpose. Lord, in all the challenges that lie ahead, help me to trust in you. My times are in your hands. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your unfailing love. Let me not be put to shame, Lord, for I have cried out to you. In tests, yet not what I will, but what you will. Sometimes you may face difficulties in life, not because you're doing something wrong, but because you're doing something right. All of us will face tests, trials and temptations in life. You're not alone. Jesus himself never did anything wrong, yet he faced greater tests, trials and temptations than anyone in human history. First, disloyalty. Loyalty is a wonderful quality. Loyalty of friends and colleagues is encouraging, upbuilding and reassuring in times of troubles, trials and temptations. Disloyalty is gutting. Jesus had spent three years with 12 people he loved, lived with and had trained. Yet he had to say to them, one of you will betray me. It is horrible to be betrayed by an enemy or an acquaintance, but to be betrayed by a friend is almost unbearable. Second, disappointment. Not only did one of the disciples betray him, all the rest fell away. Again, this must have been a huge disappointment to Jesus. These were his closest friends, yet in the time of trial, they all fell away. Even the one who was such a strong leader, Peter. Although Peter was absolutely determined not to deny Jesus, he did eventually disown him. Third, distress. As Jesus approaches the terrible moment, he's deeply distressed and troubled. His soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Fourth, death. We looked previously at the Old Testament background to the cup of God's wrath against sin. As he passes around the cup, he says, This is the blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Later on in Gethsemane, he prayed, How I wish I could be with you now and change my tone, because I am perplexed about you. Tell me, you who want to be under the law, are you not aware of what the law says? Sorry about that. This is the Bible in one year, day Ooh. 67. But, during one of the severe potato famines in Ireland, a number of families... 
it skipped okay let's just go straight to the be merciful to me lord for i am in distress my eyes grow weak with sorrow my soul and body with grief my life is consumed by anguish and my years by groaning my strength fails because of my affliction and my bones grow weak because of all my enemies i am the utter contempt of my neighbors and an object of dread to my closest friends those who see me on the street flee from me i am forgotten as though i were dead i have become like broken pottery for i hear many whispering terror on every side they conspire against me and plot to take my life but i trust in you lord i say you are my god my times are in your hands deliver me from the hands of my enemies from those who pursue me let your face shine on your servant save me in your unfailing love let me not be put to shame lord for i have cried out to you but let the wicked be put to shame and be silent in the realm of the dead let their lying lips be silenced for with pride and contempt they speak Oh, why does it keep pausing? Leviticus 17. Ooh. The Lord said to <laughs> Moses, Speak to Aaron and his sons, and to all the Israel. When the evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were reclining at the table eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They were saddened, and one by one they said to him, Surely you don't mean me. It is one of the twelve, he replied, one who dips bread into the bowl with me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him, but woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, he said to them. Truly, I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. You will all fall away, Jesus told them, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter declared, even if all fall away, I will not. Truly, I tell you, Jesus answered, today, yes, tonight, before the rooster crows twice, you yourself will disown me three times. But Peter insisted emphatically, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the others said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them, stay here and keep watch. Going a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed that, if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Couldn't you keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Once more he went away and prayed the same thing. When he came back again, found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. Returning the third time, he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Enough. The hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Leviticus 17. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to Aaron and his sons and to all the Israelites and say to them, This is what the Lord has commanded. 
Any Israelite who sacrifices an ox, a lamb or a goat, in the camp or outside of it, instead of bringing it to the entrance to the tent of meeting, to present it as an offering to the Lord in front of the tabernacle of the Lord, that person shall be considered guilty of bloodshed. They have shed blood and must be cut off from their people. This is so the Israelites will bring to the Lord the sacrifices they are now making in the open fields. They must bring them to the priest, that is to the Lord, at the entrance to the tent of meeting and sacrifice them as fellowship offerings. The priest is to splash the blood against the altar of the Lord at the entrance to the tent of meeting and burn the fat as an aroma pleasing to the Lord. They must no longer offer any of their sacrifices to the goat idols to whom they prostitute themselves. This is to be a lasting ordinance for them and for the generations to come. Say to them, any Israelite or any foreigner residing among them who offers a burnt offering or sacrifice and does not bring it to the entrance to the tent of meeting to sacrifice it to the Lord must be cut off from the people of Israel. I will set my face against any Israelite or any foreigner residing among them who eats blood, and I will cut them off from the people. For the life of a creature is in the blood, and I have given it to you to make atonement for yourselves on the altar. It is the blood that makes atonement for one's life. Therefore I say to the Israelites, none of you may eat blood, nor may any foreigner residing among you eat blood. Any Israelite or any foreigner residing among you who hunts any animal or bird that may be eaten must drain out the blood and cover it with earth, because the life of every creature is its blood. That is why I have said to the Israelites, you must not eat the blood of any creature, because the life of every creature is its blood. Anyone who eats it must be cut off. Anyone, whether native-born or foreigner, who eats anything found dead or torn by wild animals must wash their clothes and bathe with water, and they will be ceremonially unclean till evening. Then they will be clean. But if they do not wash their clothes and bathe themselves, they will be held responsible. Leviticus 18. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, I am the Lord your God. You must not do as they do in Egypt, where you used to live, and you must not do as they do in the land of Canaan, where I am bringing you. Do not follow their practices. You must obey my laws and be careful to follow my decrees. I am the Lord your God. Keep my decrees and laws, for the person who obeys them will live by them. I am the Lord. No one is to approach any close relative to have sexual relations. I am the Lord. Do not dishonor your father by having sexual relations with your mother. She is your mother. Do not have relations with her. Do not have sexual relations with your father's wife. That would dishonor your father. Do not have sexual relations with your sister, either your father's daughter or your mother's daughter, whether she was born in the same home or elsewhere. Do not have sexual relations with your son's daughter or your daughter's daughter. That would dishonor you. Do not have sexual relations with the daughter of your father's wife, born to your father. She is your sister. Do not have sexual relations with your father's sister. She is your father's close relative. Do not have sexual relations with your mother's sister because she is your mother's close relative. Do not dishonor your father's brother by approaching his wife to have sexual relations. She is your aunt. Do not have sexual relations with your daughter-in-law. She is your son's wife. Do not have relations with her. Do not have sexual relations with your brother's wife. That would dishonor your brother. Do not have sexual relations with both a woman and her daughter. Do not have sexual relations with either her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter. They are close relatives. That is wickedness. Do not take your wife's sister as a rival wife and have sexual relations with her while your wife is living. Do not approach a woman to have sexual relations during the uncleanness of her monthly period. Do not have sexual relations with your neighbor's wife and defile yourself with her. Do not give any of your children to be sacrificed to Moloch, for you must not profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. 
do not have sexual relations with a man as one does with a woman. That is detestable. Do not have sexual relations with an animal and defile yourself with it. A woman must not present herself to an animal to have sexual relations with it. That is a perversion. Do not defile yourselves in any of these ways because this is how the nations that I'm going to drive out before you became defiled. Even the land was defiled, so I punished it for its sin, and the land vomited out its inhabitants. But you must keep my decrees and my laws. The native-born and the foreigners residing among you must not do any of these detestable things. For all these things were done by the people who lived in the land before you, and the land became defiled. And if you defile the land, it will vomit you out as it vomited out the nations that were before you. Everyone who does any of these detestable things, such persons must be cut off from their people. Keep my requirements. And do not follow any of the detestable customs that were practiced before you came, and do not defile yourselves with them. I am the Lord your God. All right, that's the end of that devotional. I think we have time for one more, and then we will call it a day. This devotional is, this, is this devotional is what's in your heart. The Bible in one year, day sixty-eight. What's in your heart? The Nobel Prize winner and most important Russian literary artist of the second half of the twentieth century, Alexander Solzhenitsyn, who was imprisoned for eight years for criticizing Stalin, wrote: "The line separating good and evil passes not through states, nor through classes." Nor through political parties, but right through every human heart, and through all human hearts, we are all created in the image of God. Human beings are capable of acts of great love, courage, and heroism. Yet, not one of us, apart from Jesus, is without sin. Do you know what's in your heart? From Proverbs six, your heart. And its weakness, all sin breaks God's law, and is therefore serious. But there are gradations of sin. Some sins are far worse than others. The writer of Proverbs makes this point by using the example of a person who steals because he's starving. Yes, even this is wrong, and there's a price to pay. But the writer says the consequences of adultery are far more serious. It leads to shame, jealousy, revenge, and to the destruction of lives, particularly the adulterers themselves. Soul-destroying, self-destructive, a reputation ruined for good. The writer says jealousy arouses a husband's fury, and he will show no mercy when he takes revenge. Human nature has not changed in thousands of years. There's nothing wrong with sex or money, but there are many temptations that surround them both. Several of the laws of the Old Testament passage for today were developed to put boundaries around them, safeguarding their proper use. Lord, thank you for the gifts you give us. And the boundaries that you have provided for their proper use, lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. New Testament from Mark fourteen. Your heart and its results. Sinful human nature led to the death of Jesus. The challenge is to live differently. First, be authentic. Judas betrayed Jesus with a kiss. He said, "The one I kiss is the man." He went up to Jesus and kissed him. In the Greek, the word for hypocrisy is the same word as the word for mask. Masks were used in ancient Greece for acting. On the outside, Judas was wearing a mask of love for Jesus. In reality, he was portraying him to be crucified. The kiss was the ultimate act of hypocrisy. Joyce Meyer writes about what she calls the Judas kiss test, the test of being betrayed by friends we've loved. Respected and trusted, most people in positions of leadership for any length of time are likely to experience this. You need to forgive the offender and not allow him or her to cause you to fail or delay in doing what God has called you to do. Second, speak the truth, because there's no evidence against Jesus. They had to rely on false testimony. Yet it appears that many were prepared to testify against him. Having worked as a barrister, I've observed firsthand. Some are still prepared to give false testimony in a court of law. Third, fight corruption. 
Corrupt judges are still a feature of the world today. They knew or ought to have known that Jesus was entirely innocent, yet they all condemned him as worthy of death. It must be terrible to live in a society without the rule of law, where judges cannot be trusted. Fourth, identify with Jesus. I can sympathize totally with Peter's denial of Jesus. He was really determined not to do it, yet he failed. I know how weak my own human nature is. The account of Peter's denial can only have come from Peter himself, who with extraordinary openness and vulnerability reveals his own weakness and failure. When Jesus was in serious trouble, everyone deserted him and fled. However, Peter is brave and committed enough to make his way right into the courtyard of the high priest, albeit following at a distance. In sight of Jesus and the trial, I suspect that by this point, I would have been with the rest of the disciples, halfway to Galilee. Yet there are haunting words about the self-indulgence of the great apostle Peter. While Jesus, his friend and leader, was taken to trial, Peter sat with the guards and warmed himself at the fire. As Peter saw what was happening to Jesus and what he was going to have to suffer, Peter increasingly distanced himself from Jesus. Having started in that direction, the next step was to deny him. Having set out on a course that involved lying, he ended up saying, I don't know this man you're talking about. I'm sure Peter didn't intend to go so far when keeping his distance from Jesus. But as it is for all of us, one sin can easily lead to another. And before we realize it, we end up doing things we deeply regret. When Peter realized what he'd done, he broke down and wept. Lord, thank you for the encouragement that although even the great apostle Peter failed and messed up, you forgave him, restored him, and used him so powerfully. Thank you for your amazing grace. Old Testament from Leviticus 19 and 20. Your heart and God's law. God wants us to live lives that are pure and clean. We are to reflect who he is and thereby point people towards him. This part of Leviticus has been called the holiness code. Be holy because I, the Lord your God, am holy. Because human nature... Leviticus 18. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, I am the Lord your God. You must not do as they do in Egypt, where you used to live, and you must not do as they do in the land of Canaan, where I am bringing you. Do not follow their practices. You must obey my laws and be careful to follow my decrees. I am the Lord your God. Keep my decrees and laws, for the person who obeys them will live by them. I am the Lord. No one is to approach any close relative to have sexual relations. I am the Lord. Do not dishonor your father by having sexual relations with your mother. She is your mother. Do not have relations with her. Do not have sexual relations with your father's wife. People do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy his home. Um, I feel like we already listened to that one. Just as he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, appeared. With him was a crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Rabbi, and kissed him. The men seized Jesus and arrested him. Then one of those standing near drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Am I leading a rebellion, said Jesus, that you come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I was with you, teaching in the temple courts, and you did not arrest me. But the scriptures must be fulfilled. Then everyone deserted him and fled. A young man wearing nothing but a linen garment was following Jesus. When they seized him, he fled naked, leaving his garment behind. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the teachers of the law came together. Peter followed him at a distance right into the courtyard of the high priest. 
There he sat with the guards and warmed himself at the fire. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death, but they did not find any. Many testified falsely against him, but their statements did not agree. Then some stood up and gave this false testimony against him. We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with human hands, and in three days will build another not made with hands. Yet even then their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent and gave no answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? I am, said Jesus. And you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his clothes. Why do we need any more witnesses? He asked. You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as worthy of death. Then some began to spit at him. They blindfolded him, struck him with their fists, and said, Prophesy! And the guards took him and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she looked closely at him. You also were with that Nazarene Jesus, she said, but he denied it. I don't know or understand what you're talking about, he said, and went out into the entryway. When the servant girl saw him there, she said again to those standing around, This fellow is one of them. Again he denied it. After a little while, those standing near said to Peter, Surely you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. He began to call down curses, and he swore to them, I don't know this man you're talking about. Immediately the rooster crowed the second time. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows twice, you will disown me three times. And he broke down and wept. Leviticus 19. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the entire assembly of Israel and say to them, Be holy, because I, the Lord your God, am holy. Each of you must respect your mother and father, and you must observe my Sabbaths. I am the Lord your God. Do not turn to idols or make metal gods for yourselves. I am the Lord your God. When you sacrifice a fellowship offering to the Lord, Sacrifice it in such a way that it will be accepted on your behalf. It shall be eaten on the day you sacrifice it or on the next day. Anything left over until the third day must be burned up. If any of it is eaten on the third day, it is impure and will not be accepted. Whoever eats it will be held responsible because they have desecrated what is holy to the Lord. They must be cut off from their people. When you reap the harvest of your land, do not reap to the very edges of your field or gather the gleanings of your harvest. Do not go over your vineyard a second time or pick up the grapes that have fallen. Leave them for the poor and the foreigner. I am the Lord your God. Do not steal. Do not lie. Do not deceive one another. Do not swear falsely by my name and so profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. Do not defraud or rob your neighbor. Do not hold back the wages of a hired worker overnight. Do not curse the deaf or put a stumbling block in front of the blind, but fear your God. I am the Lord. Do not pervert justice. Do not show partiality to the poor or favoritism to the great, but judge your neighbor fairly. Do not go about spreading slander among your people. Do not do anything that endangers your neighbor's life. I am the Lord. Do not hate a fellow Israelite in your heart. Rebuke your neighbor frankly, so you will not share in their guilt. Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against anyone among your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Keep my decrees. Do not make different kinds of animals. Do not plant your field with two kinds of seed. Do not wear clothing woven of two kinds of material. If a man sleeps with a female slave who is promised to another man, but who has not been ransomed or given her freedom, there must be due punishment. 
yet they are not to be put to death because she has not been freed. The man, however, must bring a ram to the entrance to the tent of meeting for a guilt offering to the Lord. With the ram of the guilt offering, the priest is to make atonement for him before the Lord for the sin he has committed, and his sin will be forgiven. When you enter the land and plant any kind of fruit tree, regard its fruit as forbidden. For three years you are to consider it forbidden. It must not be eaten. In the fourth year all its fruit will be holy, an offering of praise to the Lord. But in the fifth year you may eat its fruit. In this way your harvest will be increased. I am the Lord your God. Do not eat any meat with the blood still in it. Do not practice divination or seek omens. Do not cut the hair at the sides of your head or clip off the edges of your beard. Do not cut your bodies for the dead or put tattoo marks on yourselves. I am the Lord. Do not degrade your daughter by making her a prostitute or the land will turn to prostitution and be filled with wickedness. Observe my Sabbaths and have reverence for my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Do not turn to mediums or seek out spiritists for you will be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. Stand up in the presence of the aged. Show respect for the elderly and revere your God. I am the Lord. When a foreigner resides among you in your land, do not mistreat them. The foreigner residing among you must be treated as your native born. Love them as yourself, for you were foreigners in Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Do not use dishonest standards when measuring length, weight, or quantity. Use honest scales and honest weights, an honest ether and an honest hin. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt. Keep all my decrees and all my laws and follow them. I am the Lord. Leviticus 20. The Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, Any Israelite or any foreigner residing in Israel who sacrifices any of his children to Moloch is to be put to death. The members of the community are to stone him. I myself will set my face against him and will cut him off from his people. For by sacrificing his children to Moloch, he has defiled my sanctuary and profaned my holy name. If the members of the community close their eyes when that man sacrifices one of his children to Moloch, and if they fail to put him to death, I myself will set my face against him and his family and will cut them off from their people together with all who follow him in prostituting themselves to Moloch. I will set my face against anyone who turns to mediums and spiritists to prostitute themselves by following them, and I will cut them off from their people. Consecrate yourselves and be holy because I am the Lord your God. Keep my decrees and follow them. I am the Lord who makes you holy. Anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death. Because they have cursed their father or mother, their blood will be on their own head. If a man commits adultery with another man's wife, with the wife of his neighbor, both the adulterer and the adulteress are to be put to death. If a man has sexual relations with his father's wife, he has dishonored his father. Both the man and the woman are to be put to death. Their blood will be on their own heads. If a man has sexual relations with his daughter-in-law... We've both... also heard this one before. Okay. I think that's the... It... Yeah. I think that's a great place to stop. We have two minutes to spare. All right. Let me just make sure... Yep. Okay, so that was... Let me just flip this around for anybody who's still watching. I don't get that many viewers on TikTok, but I'm going to flip it around. And before we leave, um, we're, I'm going to close out in prayer. Let's put this down a little bit. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for the people who were able to hear it today. May it touch their souls and they use the word that you've given them today in their daily lives. Lord, we love you and we love that you are a provider of our needs and a protector against all enemies. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
thank you, Lord. We thank you for your word that makes us better each and every day and improves our lives and the people around us. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to show the world and the people how you love them and to be a representative for the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, y'all. So I do hope that um, this live stream was a nice little break for, um, yes, amen. Um, I hope it was a nice little break from your busy day and that it was able to touch you. I am going to finish the end of this blanket and then start making dinner. <laughs> but anyway, yes, I hope you have a wonderful day and as always, create something gorgeous. Bye, guys.